I would say our relations with the Hispanic community the, were mixed prior to the Parity Project. There definitely was a lot of frustration and anger in the community about some things. On the other hand, we also had some people who felt good about the newspaper and we had many Hispanic readers. But what the Parity Project did, I think, was Hispanic readers felt like we were better reflecting the totality of the community. It's helped us hire and recruit Hispanic journalists. So it's, it's really strengthened us as a newspaper. Yes, we have had hostility to some of the work we've done, but we expect that. That's part of the job. It doesn't mean we stop doing it. It means we try to communicate and talk about it. And I'm really proud of some of the work we've done, such as the columns by Tina Griego and Border Street, which really revealed how immigration is affecting uh, a, a major city like Denver even though many readers were very upset by it. That's part of our job is to give them information that might change how they think. Well, since Parity was launched, we ended up hiring a lot of really talented young Latino journalists. Those journalists were also from a diverse background. So we had some from Colorado who had been here who were multi-generational. We had some who were the children of immigrants. And so within that group of, of young journalists who came to us, we had diversity, and a diversity that reflected the diversity of the community as a whole. And that proved to be really important in helping to shape and guide our coverage. When, when we first started having conversations um, about the Parity Project, there was a recognition by our editor um, that the Latino community was growing very quickly in Denver and that we simply did not have the knowledge base to, to cover it and cover it well. So the idea was, okay, let's grow our own. Let's bring in these young people who have talent, who have a little bit of experience. Let's put them in our newsroom and put them into, I mean, they're, they're reporters. They're not, they're not doing anything, you know, uh, they're doing what a reporter would do. They're, they hit the ground running. And so, um, you know, so for a while there, we were really we were bringing a lot of people in, and not just as reporters, photographers and designers, um, and so that helped us increase our base of coverage. I would tell other newsroom leaders that even at a time of incredibly tight budgets, there's certain lessons that you can take from the Parity Project. One is reach out to the community, develop relationships within the community, seek advice and feedback from the community. That isn't dependent on a budget. That's dependent on how you use your time. And then in, in your newsrooms to make sure that you're not taking the easy way out in coverage. As times get lean, it's too easy to go, well, we can't do that, we can't do that. No, say you can't do that to things that don't matter as much and pick things that really matter and make a mark as a news organization. Pick stories that are gonna really be revealing and evaluate your coverage to make sure that your picture of any community is well-rounded, complete, and not you know, stereotypical and shallow or narrow. The relations between the Rocky Mountain News and the Latino community in years past were, well, maybe just address the name, Rocky. Uh, actually, at one time in the early 1980s, there was a talk of a boycott uh, of the Rocky Mountain News by the Latino community. Today, uh, we feel that actually we are better represented in the Denver area with the news and the stories. Since the Parity Project was uh, launched here at the Rocky Mountain News, uh, or in the Denver area per se, uh, the Latino community has had a direct influence, and I would say even more importantly, a direct say of how the coverage of our community has been carried out. Uh, before that, we did not have such a thing. We definitely feel that we have um, much more of a voice. We, um, there wasn't much connection in the past between the community and the paper. And um, since we began meeting uh, five years ago, um, those of us on the committee and many in the community of large have had access to reporters and to the editors and more of a relationship than we've had in the past. I also think that that relationship, yes, it has given us a voice. I think it has also benefited the paper. We have seen that change in the last five years and 
uh, and we know that we can bring up um, an issue for discussion, uh, an issue of concern, and, um, and that we will be listened to. I think I'd say that the Parity Project made the Rocky Mountain News a better paper. It made the Rocky Mountain News a better paper because it made the news cognizant of the variety of voices within the Latino community. It brought some of those voices in within the newsroom. It brought them in from the community to take part in conversations with the editor. And though there have been challenges, particularly as it goes to retention, we have a knowledge base now. And again, I think it's really important that now that our eyes have been opened to the potential of what we can cover in the Latino community, to the education that we can offer to our readers, it's really important that we somehow find a way to keep those eyes open and to keep those feet on the ground and to keep telling the stories.